just going to give you a quick little thought. Sometimes you need to brush up on stuff you already know, and you already know this. So I'm going to talk to everybody in here tonight. Sometimes the message is for one group or another. Tonight it's for everybody. No matter who you are or how old you are, I've got something for you to listen to me. I want you to listen. You'll find out your part in a minute. Isaiah 38 and verse 1. It said, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, come to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I want to preach just a few minutes tonight on God's order for your home. God's order for your home. Now, I preach a lot, I preach a lot about this, and every preacher you have to nowadays, because our homes are under attack. Every home in this building tonight is under attack from the devil. Every marriage is under attack from the devil to destroy it. He don't want nobody to stay married, unless it's two men or something like that. That's right. He don't want nobody to have what God wants them to have. Now, we're living in a time whenever the bottom, the, the props are being knocked out from under us. All this transgender stuff and stuff that's going on now, uh, they're now saying at our major colleges that you're not even supposed to say men and women. Uh, you're not supposed to say it because they're trying to take gender out of that completely. Well, you know, it's impossible to do that because when God made people on earth, he made Adam and then he took a rib out of Adam and made Eve. Uh, they said he made Adam uh, probably pretty late in the evening because it was a little before Eve. That's what they say. But anyway, uh, he, he made Adam and made Eve, and he put them. Adam, a woman comes out of man. That A woman is a man with a womb. Womb. Womb man. A man with a womb. That's what a woman is. So a woman was made out of man. Man was made out of dirt, and woman was made out of man. And that's why you can't, there's no way to separate the gender. You can't, you can't do it. That male principle is always there. They say if you say, uh, they say if you say uh, uh, boys and girls and stuff like that, that you're leaving out one of the other genders. But, you know, if you say women, if you say woman, that's not female, woman, M-A-N. If you say women, it's got M-E-N in it. If you say, well, ladies, that's lad, that's male, L-A-D. If you say, uh, uh, if you if you say we're a madam, that's Adam, and that's male. No, and you can't separate them. They're all the male principle is always there. So tonight, I'd like to look at uh, God's order for the home tonight. You, I'm not going to say anything that you don't, you people don't know already. But I, I need to say it very often because the world will shift you. And the world will shift you in the way you think. Uh, if you're not careful, if you don't listen to preaching regularly and read your Bible regularly, you will adopt the world's philosophy and way of thinking. You will. You go to school with it. You go to work with it. You see it on TV. The world, the world, the new, the world, school, the world. Uh, college, the world, work, the world. It's just the world's philosophy. And you know as well as I know that philosophy will get, get in your head and you'll start thinking as the world thinks instead of the way God said. Now, God has an order for the home. And your home will never be happy and blessed like it can be, could be, until you're willing to follow God's order. I'm going to talk to the husbands. I'm going to talk to the wives and then I'm going to talk to the children. Everybody in here is one of them. You say, I ain't married. Well, you're a child. Uh, you, uh, you're, you got a daddy and a mama somewhere, or had one. So everybody fits into one of them three categories. A mom, a dad, a husband, a wife, or a child. Everybody in here. First of all, let's look, uh, just a second, at God's plan for the man. In God's, in God's order, he has a plan for the home. 
Now, when, and immediately when you start this and you start saying the man is the head of the home, there's an immediate uproar of protest from the world. They go crazy. If they heard me say that tonight, they'd say, oh, he's one of them old-fashioned crazy people that believe men are better than women. Well, you're listening to demons. I didn't say that. Did anybody hear me say men's better than women? No. I ain't never said it. The truth is they ain't. Most of the time a woman's better than a man. But that, that's another subject. Uh, I've never said women, men are better than women. I've never said uh, men are more important than women. That's, that's the devil. Telling them. They go crazy. As soon as you say the man is supposed to be the head of the home, they go, ah! You're saying that, uh, well, well, who do you believe is supposed to be the head of it? Women? Well, we, we go, ah! You know, if you say that. And you say, well, I believe both. Far. That's impossible. It, you can't have two heads. Nothing. Anything that has two heads, a monster, like 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 an animal. Do it. It can't be done. And so God said, the husband is the head of the home. He, that's why Joshua stood up that time, and he said, as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Joshua's wife didn't stand up and say, as for me and my house, we'll serve. No, no. It was Joshua, the man. All you men in here listening to me tonight, you are the man. You say, boy, I'll tell you one thing. I'm the man of the house. Well, that's, it comes with a lot of responsibilities, sir. It, it, it ain't just like, oh boy, I get to be the boss. No, 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 no. You are to be the example. You are to be the leader. You are to be the spiritual leader of the home. You are to be, listen, you are to be the, uh, the, you ought to be the most well read in the Bible you ought to be stronger in the Lord your faith ought to be stronger man ought to be strong not just physically but every way he ought to be uh, the Bible said the woman's the weaker vessel so the man ought to be strong and be strong listen God help ladies that are married to some weak kneed sissified little man that's scared to move I mean if he heard a noise outside he'd say honey go out there and see what that that kind of man like like that uh, like that I said uh, one time these two little old boys uh, was talking like this one time one of them said uh, my daddy can beat up your daddy and he said I, I don't I know my mama can beat up my daddy uh, uh, God help a, a family that has a weak man in charge of it ladies and gentlemen tonight the God's order for the home. Now listen, let me tell you something tonight. I don't take time to do this a lot, but God made an order for the universe. He made the sun, he made the stars, he made the planets, and he made the moon, and he did not discriminate against either one of them. When God said the sun is to rule the day, all the moon and stars didn't jump up and say, not fair, discrimination. No, no, it was God's plan for the sun. God's plan for the moon and the stars was rule the night. Does that mean he discriminated against the sun? Of course not. Does that mean God was prejudiced against the moon because he let the sun rule? No, no, crazy people think like that. It's God's order. He doesn't say one's better than the other. He doesn't say one's more important than the other. He just said, this is my order. And listen, when God says husbands are the head of the home and wives are, are, the, are, the, are the submission to the husband and the children submit to the parents, he's not saying uh, husbands are better than kids. He's not saying kids are better than mamas. Uh, they, he loves them all the same. That's just his order. That's just his order. And anybody that's right with God and believes the Bible has no problem with God's order for the home. Am I right? No problem with that. If you love God and you're right with God here tonight, what I'm saying ain't going to bother you one bit. You'll say, that's exactly what it says, preacher. I thank you for telling us what the Bible said. God's plan, husbands, is to be. Now, listen. Uh, very seldom a home goes down the tube where there's a good man. Very seldom. I mean, it does happen, but it's very seldom. That's why God commands men to love their wives. You know, the Bible don't command women to love their husbands. It, it sort of comes natural for them. But he commanded a man to love his wife. You know why? Because men are selfish. All men are in their own natural state. When they get right with God, they'll love their wife like they're supposed to and not until. If you got a man that's not right with God, you know who he's in love with? His self. Uh, he, he's, he's selfish. And ladies and gentlemen tonight, that's why God said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Don't you ladies sit there and scream and say, discrimination! 
It's not fair. Why does he get to be the most? Well, well, why do we have to love you enough to die for you? You don't have to love us enough to die for us. For, for us. That, that's discrimination. See, your, your mind, you're listening to the devil. God knows what he's doing, people. God don't make no mistakes. And if you want to be happy, you will accept and try to go by God's plan for your home. And if you don't, it'll be out of whack and it'll never work out right. It may work, but you'll not have the peace of God on your marriage and home like it's supposed to be. Look, boys, men, you'll never have the peace of God in your home making your wife take all the responsibility. I, I couldn't tell you the time that I've got phone calls. It's a woman. She'll say, uh, Preacher, uh, we, uh, we need some help paying her power bill or something like that. And, and uh, I'll say, Well, how much is it? I can hear him in the background. It's one hundred eighteen dollars. It's one hundred eighteen dollars. And I, when you gotta have it? When we gotta have it? We gotta have it by next Friday. We gotta have it by next Friday. And that's sorry thing. Not only will not pay his bills, he's he's too scared to even get on the phone, call a preacher, and ask for help. That happens all the time. You can always I've heard them in the background tell them what to say, what to say, what to say. That's pitiful. I know women. I, I've seen one just recently uh, where they was out there. They these people wasn't even married, and where the guy was on drugs, and the woman pulls out her purse and starts counting the money, trying to pay the bill, and putting and laid down. The tip and everything, and that old sorry thing just walks right out there and gets in her car and sits over here. I seen one last night. We stopped at 20 after 2 and Bur down there near Burlington, where they had the big revival, right in there, where Greensboro, between there and Greensboro, and got gas. And there's a car in front of us. Big old guy laid back over there like this in the seat like this, you know, like he's the king of the world. Like that. And the girl standing out there getting the gas and putting the gas in. Now, I might be a little old-fashioned, but I just, I'm telling you that I, I have a problem with a man that makes a woman get out and have to put the gas. Uh, have to put the gas. I know where the woman has to get out and mow the grass. I don't think it's wrong for a woman to mow the grass. If you like to mow it and you want to mow it, that's fine. But if you're a man and you're healthy, uh, that, I mean, you good Lord, man. I mean, get out there and get to work and keep that grass cut and keep them bills paid and do right and provide for your family. I ain't saying it's wrong if the woman likes to cut grass and he works 80 hours a week. I'm just saying, there's one right there. The best thing to do if you got any sense is next time you move, don't get no grass. I was dumb when I was about eight and uh, 21, 22. But if I if I ever have another yard, it ain't gonna be grass. <laughs> I'm on more broke right now. <laughs> but I'm telling you tonight, listen, it's a man's job. Amen. Heard about this little boy one time. He's going. Uh, he's coming to Sunday school. He come in on a pretty sunshiny day and sit there like this. And the teacher said, Little Johnny, I'm so proud of you, son. I'm glad you come to Sunday school today. And he said, Thank you. He said, I wanted to go fishing real bad. But Daddy said there wasn't enough seats in that boat for me. That means Daddy and his friends went to fishing and sent the kid to church. That's pitiful, isn't it? That's pitiful. Amen. I read about them happy Goodmans. You know the happy Goodmans? Remember Vestel Goodman? The happy, I mean, great, great, great family. Many, many years of gospel singing. You know how them, that family got started? That old boy built a log cabin in Alabama. Listen to me. And when them kids was little, Rusty, Vestel, all them the Goodmans, when they were little kids, they had a log cabin in Alabama and walked five miles to Sunday school every Sunday morning and had a picnic lunch that day and turned around and had church that night and walked five miles back home. Walked. Back then, people said, I'm getting my family to church. And I'm going to tell you men, here's something tonight. Buck up. Get mad. Buck all you want to, but you're going to answer to God for your family being in the house of God. You're going to answer for it, buddy. You'll answer to God for it. You'll answer to God for it. I don't care who it is. I don't care who, 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 who gets mad, who, jump, who hears me on the Internet. It don't matter. You'll answer to God for how you led your family spiritually. Amen. That's right. It's your job, Daddy. See, kids can fool mama a little bit. So it's, it's, uh, if you got a girl, 
It's your job. You know, I had three girls. I mean, I know, still got three girls. And I know, I remember when they used to want to go somewhere, and they'd been a many a time when I go in there and say, go in there and change that. You ain't leaving dressed like that. Daddy has to do that. Because Mama thinks, oh, it's cute. Once in a while you get a woman that's smart enough to say, uh-uh, uh-uh. I mean, they, you, some of you ladies sometimes, I mean, they're 12, 13, 14, and you look at them they're like you're a little kid. They ain't no little kid no more. And the devil in the world, the perverts out there, don't see them like a little child no more. And sometimes Daddy has to say, uh-uh, nope, nope. Nope. I've even seen women sometimes when the, when, the, when the boyfriend, whatever he is, comes over and the mama say, oh, he, he's a nice boy. And daddy said, no, he ain't. We, it takes one to know one, don't it? Amen. We know him because that's the same way we was. Amen, fellas? Amen. We look at them and say, you sorry, good for nothing thing. You, I know what you want. You're after my dog. Get out of here. That's what you want to say. And boy, it took me a long time. It took me a long time. I, there's one of them sitting right over there tonight. He sent me a text. Because I always told him, I said, look, when you're going to marry somebody, when you're going to marry a girl, you ask her daddy first. That's a little old-fashioned, ain't it? That's the way it always used to be. Some of y'all look at me like, what? That shows how perverted you are by our generation. Ain't that the way it always used to be? Yes, Daddy. And I always told him, you've got to ask me first. He sent me a text one day. I at least had enough guts to do it. And he said, uh, I was wondering if you cared that I give Carissa a ring. And I forgot what I sent back to him. I said something like, We'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, well, I'll let you know about a month. Pray. <laughs> now, and all three of them like that. They're carrying them in Georgia, and try, they want to get married when she was 18. And I said, nope, too young. Too young. Too young. Nope, nope. All right. uh, you want my blessings? You'll wait. If you, you say, well, we love each other. If you really love each other, it ain't going to kill you to wait just a little while. You see, between 18 and 21, you change a whole lot, Right? Uh, you do a lot of growing up. You ain't even the same person when you're 21 as you was when you was 18. And I know girls that are 16, 17, and 18 and say, I love him. And I know that I'll never love nobody else. Now listen, when you're that dumb, when you're that dumb, you don't need to be out of the house. You really don't need to be out of the house. If you're dumb enough to think what you feel for that guy's love and you'll never love nobody else, you, oh, man, you're so far off base. You couldn't get further off if you tried to. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Daddy has to, he has to be sort of like the patrolman, sort of like the uh, Supreme Court judge. Daddy has to sort of say, hey, that ain't right, that ain't right. He has to think more with his head instead of his emotions and the heart. Woman's the heart, daddy's the head. And, the woman, and God made us that way. So man, take your responsibility. Lord, I've seen some of them and you think, what in the world? He is so ugly. When, they come, when he was born, they spanked his mama. But, said that guy, he, said that guy, that girl brought to church that day, he's so skinny, he didn't have one stripe on his pajamas. I'm, I'm telling you tonight, listen, that's daddy's job. Daddy's job, get the family up and get them to the house again on Sunday morning. Amen. They said, he is so dumb, they sold him at a yard sale for half off. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's talk secondly tonight. Let's talk secondly tonight about the wife. Why? The woman of the house. She's the completer. When you first met him, your three favorite words were, I love you. Now your three favorite words are, let's eat out. Times has a way of changing that, don't it? Time has a way of, don't, don't hey man, all, the, all you hear nowadays, and I'm going to say something here tonight, and I want you to get what I'm trying to say, and I hope you take it in the spirit that I'm trying to say it in. I'm a little bit weary, leery, and weary of a lot of the Christian books and Christian teaching you hear concerning marriage today it's got a, a very, very, very anti-male slant to it. Very. You better be careful about Christian books and 
seminars on marriage these days because they're always saying, they're, they're, they're coming out with this stuff of, now, men and women are equal, which is not true. If you think men and women are equal, you need to go to the doctor. You're bad, there's something bad wrong with you. And you, I know what they mean. They mean as far as uh, God loving and stuff like that. That's true. I understand that. But men and women are not equal, and they ain't supposed to be. They're supposed to be different. They say, separate but equal. Every FM preacher just about on the radio now preaches it that the husband is to be the spiritual leader, and if he's the leader he ought to be, the wife will automatically follow him, and he's to never have to set his foot down and say anything. And if he does, he's wrong. That ain't scriptural. That ain't right. Say whatever you want to. That ain't right. You say, well, she, she shouldn't have to do what he said. Let me tell you something. You know, most Christian ladies now, they find ways to manipulate their husband, and they, and they, they figure out a way to do it and make it still look like they're submitting. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. And the devil and your husband, maybe. You ain't fooling the devil. And I'm going to tell you tonight, listen, ladies, you ain't going to change him. You can fuss, you can kick, you can scream. You can try your best to correct him and fuss at him and fuss, and it's, he's probably going to get worse. My mom fussed at my daddy for 50 years. I mean, and it did not do one bit of good. I mean, just turn him over to God. Turn him over to God. You ain't going to change him. You say, well, ooh, I just can't get him to do what I want him to do. That's, you can't, you ain't going. To it. Don't work like that. It's like me fussing at that piece of wood right there. It don't work. <whistles> Ladies, come on now. As the guy said his wife was hateful, 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 bite his head off, smart aleck, wouldn't say nothing nice and everything. And, and he said, well, What's wrong with you? Oh, gee, I just had a bad day. Shut up. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. And then the telephone rings, and it's one of her friends. She said, oh, hey there. How are you? Oh, really? Oh, is that right? Did your hormones change as soon as you picked up the phone? No, you're full of the devil and don't want to respect your husband and be nice to him. Now, you're sitting there thinking right now, now, he's harder on us than he was the men. See, that's how you think. That's what's wrong with you. You always want, I'm not being treated fair. That's, that's your problem right there. Listen, I didn't write this book. I didn't say, husbands, love your wives, Christ, love the church. I didn't tell, said the wife, said to be in subjection to her husband in everything as the church is to Jesus. I didn't write that. Don't you get mad at me. I'm just, telling, I'm just putting the mail in your box. I don't think a man ought to lord over his wife. I don't think he's a dictator. I don't think he ought to be mean. But you are not going to improve on what God said in that book. If a man loves his wife right and a wife respects her husband right, that is the best chance you've got for happiness and peace in your home. I'm trying to help both of you. I ain't for neither one. I'm for preaching the Bible. And if anybody can come up here tonight and tell me something I preach that ain't the Bible, you come up here and tell me, and I apologize to it. But if it is, you're going to have to deal with it. I told a girl the other day, I said, you better watch out. You mess around here and you're going to have an affair, find your boyfriend. And she said, no, no. I said, yeah, I'm telling you. But I said, you remember how you used to feel about your husband? How you're so crazy over him? Well, that's the way you are about that boyfriend to start with. And if you had him for six months, you'd feel the same way about him as you do your husband. They're all the same. I hate to tell you girls that. We're all the same. <laughs> Amen. Now, I mean, some's worse than others, but basically... Men are the same. You get you another, and you'd say, "Ugh." I was this guy one time. He, he, uh, he, he. I'm just gonna make up a name. So if it's your name, he said, he's, he's, he's Debbie. Let's just say Debbie. And his wife's name was Debbie. And he, him, and Debbie fought all the time. He's fought all the time. And he told me this. He said, "Me and Debbie fought all the time. Me and Debbie fought all the time." He said, "Finally, I had all I could take. I kicked her to the curb. We got divorced." And he said, buddy, it wasn't long after that till I met Susan. And he said, me and Susan, man, when I met her, 
Woo! Bells rung. I mean, I, I had goosebumps. I had I, my hair set up on the back of my neck. Woo! And I said, well, how's it going now? He said, you know, we was married about two years and she turned into Debbie. I said, they're all Debbie. They're all Debbie. Unless they're right with God. They're all Debbie. <laughs> they're all Joe, y'all. They're all Joe. Unless they're right with God. And if a man's treating you wrong, and he beats you, and he's unfaithful to you, that's, I mean, he's full of the devil. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, you've got to do what you've got to do. But I'm telling you tonight, you, you, you pray a wall of prayer around him. Pray, pray a wall of prayer around your kids. Uh, serve God. Do right. Grass ain't greener on the other side of the fence. Amen. Lastly, I'll say this time through. I was just going to preach a few minutes, and y'all must need it bad, I reckon. Number three, kids. You know what the kid's job is? Honor, obey, and respect. All you young people in here tonight, how many kids we got in here? Under 21, would you stand up, please? Under 21, would you stand up? Good night. Half the crowd here tonight. All right, all y'all be seated. Everybody stood up, listen to me. You're not right with God if you disrespect your parents, you talk back to your mom, or you disrespect for your daddy. You're not right with the Lord. Yeah, listen, as soon as you get right with the Lord, you'll treat your parents with some respect. They ain't always right. They ain't perfect. But you respect your daddy. You respect your mama. Amen. You don't ever, never call them the old man, old lady. I'll go and I'll tell my mama off. You better shut up. You're courting a tombstone. You know how to live long? You want to live a long life? Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God give you. Listen, buddy, I, I was never, I mean, I've done a lot of things wrong in my life, but I never talked back to my mom or dad one time. One time, not once. I mean, I'm not trying to brag on myself because I'm, man, I, I, I loved my mom and respected her too much and I was scared to say anything about daddy. I mean, he knocked my head off. I, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we, we need some kids tonight that will respect their mom and their dad. I know parents right now that say, well, they're 13 now. I just can't do nothing with them. You know they're 14 and they're out dating. They're 15 now, so I guess they can do it. Uh uh. Lord, one of them said, uh, one of them said they're 18 now, so I can't stay out later. And I said, Well, since you're 18, you probably should come home earlier. <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. Somebody they told me the other day that that coming in time is by whatever grade you're in in school. When you're eighth grade, eight o'clock, ninth grade, nine o'clock. 10th grade, 10 o'clock. Uh, not work in some cases, but I, I think, uh, you know, if it's a school function and they're with other people and stuff like that, but as far as just letting them go out by themselves and tell them, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you trust them, you're crazy. Remember what you've done? They're going to do the same thing or worse. Kids, respect your parents i never forget that time. My sister, we had our basement fixed up, and I'm going to say this, and I'm through. I, I really am. I'm through. Uh, my, my sister, my middle sister, Debbie, the one next to me, she's always the little perfect one, never done nothing wrong, always done her homework. She comes straight home every day, done her homework, done her, all her books. I had, she'd wash her hair, everything. Her clothes laid out. It made me sick. I come. I got off the bus. It's no lie. I got off the bus and had a basketball court fixed down there below Mom's house, and I lay my books down on the step, pick up the ball, and play ball in the yard until it got so dark you couldn't see. Didn't go in to eat or nothing. I used to do that a lot. And she, little Miss Perfect, would go in and do her homework. <laughs> oh, she never got in trouble at school. To this day, she's never even got a speeding ticket. I got one Thursday, going to Maryland. The devil sent that guy to, And I wasn't doing but 59, and it was 55, and then it turned into 35. Bam, they got me. And I really was trying to watch it. I really was. And I was respectful. It wasn't I, I said, we really appreciate you people out here. We're for our cops, and we pray for you. 
He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to preach in Maryland. If you leave me alone, what's wrong with you? Go out here and get some of these drugs. No, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I said, <laughs> I said I'm going to Maryland to preach, and I got a ticket. He's 59 to 35, and he said, we can, we can get you for reckless driving for that. He said, I'll reduce it to 54. I said, he said, but I can't just let you go. I said, if you can reduce it to 54, you can reduce it to 34. <laughs> then I ain't speeding. But anyway, my sister to this day has never even got a speeding ticket. I, people like that make me sick. <laughs> I'm out here trying to preach and serve God. My daughter, Corey, she's sick this evening. She's been sick all evening. Was driving down 80-something 80, 80 the other day and got stopped, and they didn't give her a ticket. Wonder why. That ain't right, y'all. That ain't fair. I'll just start having all female cops. Let us go once in a while. Lord, don't put this on the Internet, please. But, but anyway, my sister was sitting in the basement and doing, the, doing her homework, and I was fooling over here. I had a cherry bomb. Like a little, it's a little, it looks like a cherry. With a, it's a, I mean, it's like 15 firecrackers put together. And me, like an idiot, I was had a, a lighter and I just kept putting it closer and putting it closer. I was about 13 or 14, and man, that thing was. And 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 I held it and I tried to get it out and tried to get it out and it got down where and I just threw it like that, and right between me and her in midair it went off. She was there, I was here, and I threw it and right here it went, boom. Oh, my goodness. She jumped, turned around. My mom come down the step. You could smell smoke, all of that. She said, Daddy, what would you do? I said, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, brother, it was always something like that. Always something like that. And she said, I'm going to tell your daddy. I said, oh, gosh. So daddy worked the third shift for a long time. And he slept upstairs, and we stayed downstairs. And I played ball. I made me a basketball out of socks, and I'd shoot them socks in the trash can. That was the go. Oh, I used to play every night till I was. I was sweating, throwing that, shooting that sock in, the, in that trash can. And uh, we'd get to fighting, me and my sisters. And I'd push one of them, they'd push me back. You know, you ever, you ever you lay on the couch watching TV? And they, this is my half, and that's her half. She's on my hey, get over there. You can't go across that line right there. How many of you ever done that when you was growing up? Okay, that's the way it was. We fought over the Pepsis. We fought over who got to do this, who got to do that. You know, all that growing up stuff. And boy, every once in a while, Mom says, no, you better hush now. Your daddy's, Mom always took up for daddy. She said, your daddy has got to sleep. He's got to work all night. And she always said, listen, your daddy is paying the bills here. He's putting the food on the table. Y'all let him sleep. Well, we'd keep on and on, on and on. I'd throw something, hit one up. I, I was really a good child. I really was. I'm just giving y'all some examples. I was. I was a, just a perfect model little, little, little. I was preaching somewhere the other night down in South Carolina, and this lady, she's about 70, she said, I wish I had your energy. I said, well, you ought to see me when I was about 13. I, it wasn't that I, I couldn't be still. I couldn't. I mean, something just junk, your arm would jump. You know, I, I mean, I couldn't. If I tried, I could. And, and, and I'd throw something, and, and one of them would get mad. And then she'd push me, and I'd push her. And about that time, buddy, the door come, and we'd hear Daddy's feet coming down them steps. Oh, boy. Boom, boom, boom. And we done woke him up. Done woke him up and made him mad. And buddy, I mean, it was, it was awful. It was like standing before God, the great white throne, judgment getting ready to be cast into hell. That's what it felt like. I said, this is it, buddy. It's over. And I never remember. I remember thinking, Daddy ain't perfect, but he's my daddy. And he, I'll respect him. And I did. And all you kids here tonight, when your parents say no, or they refuse to let you go somewhere, or they do stuff that bothers you, you just remember this, they are still your parent. 
And you are, you're living off them. You are to honor, respect. If you've got a brain in your head, kid, you'll respect your mom and your dad, and God will look down and he'll bless you. You know what I used to tell them? I said, you're going to have kids one of these days. And some of them do now, buddy, and they're reaping what they sow. All right, let's stand by our heads for prayer.